and all my name is mamta pan and i'm working as an assistant professor in it department of ajay kumar gar engineering college gaziabad today we are going to discuss the topic introduction of functions in python so let's start it first of all we need to understand what is function why we use why we need to use the functions in our program basically function is a block of code that contains one or more python statements and used for performing a specific task basically in a program we need to write a lots of code then we have more than one uh, task to do in a single program then we uh, uh, then we partition our program into the different function one function do a particular task other function do another task so that's why we needed a function the basic uh, basic uh, need of the function is the reusability of code once we created a function we can reuse that code in another function in another program also a function uh, runs only when it is called uh, a function only runs when it is called until unless we did not call the function it will not execute it at all you can pass data uh, known as parameter into a function a function can return data as okay sorry a function can return data as a result uh, we can use a return as a keyword or not it is up to us it is an optional keyword function blocks begin with the keyword def followed by the function name and parenthesis okay now the first statement of a function can be an optional statement that is the documentation string of a function or doc string basically doc string refer to the document or uh, any statement code of a statement that represent what task you are going to do in this function next the code block within every function start with a colon that is indented indentation is very important criteria to represent a block of code the statement written or uh, bracket expression exists a function optionally passing back an expression to the caller written is an optional keyword uh, if you want to use uh, if you want to use written keyword you can if you don't want to use then let it be skip it function is a block where you have one task next what is the syntax of a function first of all we need to use def keyword next imp let's implement this okay first of all we need to use def keyword after that we use, we need to use the function name that is let's uh, say print me i want to print a string after that we need to use parenthesis parenthesis after that we need to use colon enter then function doc string function doc string is a string that represent what you wanted to do in your function uh, and it is represented as comment uh, let's say i want to print a string simple okay next next is your function suit actually your code what you wanted to do in your function i just wanted to print a string in this function so i take print and a simple string hello but okay now what next is your return expression here we don't want to return anything so we simply use r e t u r and return keyword without having any expression that means we don't want to return anything here okay so this is okay so this is our function which will print hello world a string okay and return nothing so this is the syntax of our function and this is the example what we write in the ideally next creating and calling a function creating how to create a function in a python uh, function is defined using the def keyword this is basically creating a function we already created a function so let's move to the calling a function to call a function use the function name followed by the parenthesis so here the function name is print me p r i n t print me this is my function name and followed by the parenthesis that is this is the calling of a function okay so save it and run it it will give you hello world as a result okay this string will be printed okay this is the f1 
okay here is a thing we can define a function only once but can call it multiple times i will see this statement in the next example next arguments information can be passed into function as arguments what is the arguments uh, basically arguments are specified after the function name inside the parenthesis the values the information the data which you want to pass to our function is known as the arguments you can add as many arguments as you want just separated them with a comma for example uh, instead of printing a string i just wanted to print the value of a okay here i wanted to print the value of a simple uh, i will skip this because we don't want to return here anything and i wanted to print value of of a so so if i wanted to print the value of a then when we also need the value of a so basically here we pass a as an argument and when we call the function we will give the value of a that is 5 4 6 anything that you want to print okay save it and run it 5 is printed this 5 basically uh, after calling the function go to the definition part and this 5 will assign to the a and print function will print the value of a that is your 5 this a is known as and this 5 is also known as arguments okay uh, in this a is known as argument arguments are often shortened as a r g s in python this is the short form of uh, uh, arguments in python documentation next you have uh, heard the word parameters and arguments sometimes we have to uh, think that they both terms are refer to the same thing sometimes we think that they refer to the different thing now are the same or different let discuss on the things the term parameter and arguments can be used for the same thing information that are passed into a function but when we see from the perspective of the functions then a parameter is a variable listed inside the parenthesis in the function definition let's see our example in our function definition we pass a so this is called as parameter okay now next what is an argument an argument is the value that is sent to the function when it is called i am calling function here and i am passing 5 in the parenthesis so this is called argument so so from the function's perspective a is your parameter and 5 is your argument smoothness so now number of arguments how many arguments should be passed how many data or information should be passed into the function so by default a function must be called with the correct number of argument meaning that if your function accept two arguments then you have to call a function with two argument or two data not more or not less let's see an example here in this function i am passing one argument in print me and i am passing the value single value to the function so just i got 5 as a value now here i am uh, here i am passing two arguments and here also i am passing two values then what it will give the output if i am print a and b it will print two arguments value of a and value of b now if i am passing two arguments here but i am sending only one value what will be happen let's see it will give an error what error it will give missing one required positional arguments okay now if suppose i am passing two arguments here but the value i am passing is 3 here now what will happen it also give an error takes two positional argument but three are given it will say that i am i am demanding for two arguments two value but you are sending me three values so the number of argument should be equal to the number of value passed next python functions example let's take one or two examples of python function so that it will clear you let's suppose now i wanted to make a function which add two numbers okay let's remove this 
step i want to add two numbers so let's have the function name add and i wanted to add two numbers so we take two arguments a and b i want to uh, add two numbers a and b okay now c is equals to a plus b and print c this is our function of addition of two number that is a plus b result will uh, assign to the c and i will print the value of c now this will run only when i will call the function the function name add and parenthesis here i am passing two arguments a and b so i have to pass two value when i am calling the function uh, two value for example take 5 comma 6 now run the code okay okay i'll get 11 5 plus 6 that is your 11 here what uh, i am doing i am simply calling a function with the value 5 and 6 this 5 and 6 assigned to a and b this will uh, calculate the uh, summation of a plus b and assign to it to c and print the function c now there are two types of statements one is simple statements one is questionary statements simple statement means like uh, i am saying you have class at 11 o'clock tomorrow this is a simple statement i'm passing a statement and other statement may be, uh, uh, do you have class at 11 o'clock tomorrow? This is a questionary statement. It will definitely return a question from the front end. So, here same thing happened. If I wanted to use a written statement, written is a keyword. Uh, the example which we see uh, before, this is without written value. And now I will see with written value. For example, instead of printing the value of C, I am returning the value of C with return keyword return. I will return the value of C. Now, this value comes to this place after adding above 2. Now, if I am getting a value from this, then I also need to assign this to a variable. Let's suppose I want to assign in result. Okay. So the value I am getting from the function add, this will assign to result and now I will print the result. Eleven. So the previous example was without written keyword and now this is the example with written keyword. Let's have another example. Uh, I wanted to do subtraction also in my, I wanted to do subtraction also in my function. So, nothing else. I just take one more key, uh, variable is equal to a minus b here. Okay. And return c and d. Here. Now, now after this, after the calling this function, after the execution of this function, I will get two values. So, I have to store in these two different variables. Result 1, comma, result 2. Result 1 will store a plus b that is value of c and result 2 will store uh, value of a minus b that is value of b. Now, print result 1. and result so i'll get 11 and minus 1 next example if i want to take a, a input from the user then uh, we will take input from the user int a and int b then we will assign to a and b variable and pass these a and b variable to the function definition this is your example 3 now types of function how many types of function in pythons are there pythons have three types of function first is your build in function as the name suggests these are the build in functions in the python libraries python documentation these functions are already predefined we do not need to define them we just need to call them for example help for example mean for example print these are the built-in functions 
The next type of functions are user defined functions. User defined functions are those functions which programmer create during the programming or during the coding. The third one is anonymous function. Anonymous function are those function which do not have the name. They are created using lambda keyword. They are not created with uh, standard that keyword. Okay. Now, next is your argument passing model. What is the argument passing model? Uh, when you learn about the C, A, C++, you have to uh, learn pass by value and pass by reference. Now, what are these pass by value and pass by reference? Pass by value, I am passing the value to a function and pass by reference, I am passing a reference or pointer to a function that you have already known. You have to study it in C or C++. Now, let's see here. Let's see it here. Okay, let's have a string s1 is equals to s1 is equals to pi u2 sorry pi n. Okay, now I am creating a function with def keyword uh, just uh, print sorry model. I have taken the model name and I am passing s1 as an argument in model function now i am also declaring s1 inside the function and i'm taking some another value like uh, youtube okay now i am printing the value of s1 inside is equals to comma s1 okay now I will call the function model with S1 and after that I am printing the value of S1 outside the function. Now let's guess what will be the output. This is a S1 string where I am giving it python as an string and this is the function definition where i am again defining s1 as youtube and printing s1 and now here i am calling the model function and here in this line i am printing the value of s1 outside the function okay now what will be the output let's see inside the function it will take value of s1 is youtube and outside the function it will take value of s1 as python okay Let's see another example. One more example I have taken of, uh, let's say I have taken list example. L1 is a list. Take two, three value. Okay. Now, again, I am defining a function. Let's another function test. Here I am giving L1. And uh, L1, I am appending a value to L1. I am dot append 50. Now, I will print the value of L1 inside inside the value of S1 and Call the function test by passing L1 as an argument and print outside the value of S1. Sorry, L1. This will be also L1. Now, after seeing this example, Guess what will be the output of this result? According to this, inside the value of L1 will be printed 1, 23, 4 and 50 and outside it would be 1, 23, 4. Let's see the result. Okay. Now see the result. Then I am applying this code to the string. Then inside the Inside the function, it will print some different string and outside this function, it will print different string. But in case of list, the inside and outside, the output would be same. Now, 
how it is possible in case of a string why s1 is not not modified and in case of list why it is modified okay basically example one indicate your pass by value model pass by value means pass by value means if i am doing some changes inside the function it will not reflect to the outside of the function but example to indicate pass by reference model that that means if i am doing some changes inside the function it will reflect directly to the outside also so this is your uh, basically this is your pass by value and this is your pass by reference model now the question arises which argument passing model do python follow we have already seen python's argument passing model is neither pass by value nor pass by reference because i am already saying when i am using a string it will follow pass by value and by when i am using list it will follow pass by reference model so basically python follows pass by object reference now what it is pass by object reference uh, which is also known as call by object reference or call by assignment in this event that you pass argument like whole numbers string tuples or basically if you are passing any immutable object to the function as an argument then it will follow pass by it will follow call by value and if you are passing any mutable object like uh, list uh, and like dictionary then it will follow pass by reference model so basically python follow pass by object reference math means whatever object you are passing inside the function as an argument depending upon that object it will follow the reference model it will follow the argument passing model now new terms arises binding names to the object it means that in python every variable to which we assign a value or container is treated as an object when we are assigning a value to a variable we are actually binding a name to the object okay now come to the types of argument how, how many types of arguments are there two types of arguments are in the function in python one is your formal argument one is your actual arguments okay uh, formal arguments when we are defining the function actual arguments when we pass the value during the function calls let's see in the example let's remove this okay now uh, define a function def add a comma b b we wanted to add two numbers a comma b just call this add 5 and 6 6 so when we define a function at the time of definition of function these two arguments are known as the formal arguments and when we call the function and actually pass the value to the argument these are known as actual arguments in this figure you can easily see that arguments one and argument two are formal arguments and a and b are the actual arguments formal arguments are used when we define the function and actual arguments used when we pass the value during the function call. Now, actual arguments are also is of four types, positional arguments, keyword argument, default argument, variable length argument and further variable length argument is also of two types, variable length positional argument, variable length keyword argument. Variable length arguments are also known as arbitrary arguments. Now, let, let us see one by one. First is your positional arguments. Okay. Let's see with an example. Let's remove this. Uh, let's make a function of person value. Which have person's data like a name and age. Okay. Now, print the value of name. And after that print the value of age now 
calling this function after passing the data. Person is your function name, and I am passing the data. Uh, I am passing name as Zara and age as little eighteen. Let's run the code. What I will get? I will get Zara in name, and I will get eighteen at age. Now, what here basically is doing? When I am calling this function person with the value Zara and eighteen, so Zara it is at first position and name is at first position. So Zara will assign to the name argument and eighteen is at second position. Age is at second position. So eighteen value will assign to the age argument. This will this will happen in the positional argument. So basically, a positional argument in Python is an argument whose position matter in a function call. They have assigned the value according to the position in their functions. Positional arguments mean argument must be provided in correct position in a function call. Okay, yeah. we already seen this example of the positional argument. Zara will go to the name and eighteen will go to the age. Now let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see a situation. Uh, I have a function in file p1 dot py, okay, and I am calling this function at p2 dot py. And by the mistake, I have sending the values like 18 and Zara because I don't know the position of name and age uh, uh, arguments. Now, what will happen? Let's see. Let's run the code. Now I am getting eighteen in Zara, eighteen in name, and Zara at age. Now these values are swapped according to their arguments. Uh, still, we are not facing any problem. But if I am adding plus one in the age, now let's see the. Let's see the. Okay. Now the problem arises. What did say? Can only concatenate a string with the integer, not a string to a string or integer to a string. Now the problem arises. I am getting Zara in age and I am adding an integer to the string. This will not be happen. So in such case, in such kind of problem, keyword arguments come into the picture. Now in keyword argument, what we will do? We will assign a label to the value so that they will go to the correct argument. For example, I will send uh, age is equals to eighty, comma name is equals to Zara. Now, this age label search age keyword into the argument, and this name label search name keyword into the Into these arguments now. Now let's run the code. I will get the correct uh, value to the correct argument, even if I am not sending to their correct position. Why? Just because of the keyword argument. Keyword argument in Python means that a function argument has a label. Okay. Uh, according to the label, we have sent them to the value. Now. This is the example we already implemented. Now let's come into the picture. Default argument. What are the default argument? Default arguments are the keyword argument whose values are assigned at a time of function definition. What does it mean? For example, I wanted to add two number. Okay. I wanted to add two num. Sorry, three number. I want to add now three number. A comma B comma C. Okay. Uh, add is equals to a plus b plus c. Print add. Now I am calling the function. Add. Given the value two, three, four. Okay. Now if sometimes what happen? C is always fixed, or every time I am calling the function. C will have the same value, so I can fix its value. C is equals to six. I am fixing the value of six now, and also B. B is equals to five. So B and C become the default argument. They already we have already assigned them value, so they become the default argument. 
now i just need to pass the value of a only because i need value of a i am passing the value of 2 the next case would be add 2 comma 3 i am passing two value so two will assign to a and three will update the value of b the third case will be add 2 comma 3 comma 4 in this case 2 will assign to a and b will be modified to 3 and c will be modified to 4 let's run the code and see the example in three case updated values are 13 11 and 9 these are your default argument now this is the picture that represent the positional argument keyword argument and default argument together there are some points we have to remember during these three arguments default argument should follow non default argument keyword argument should follow positional arguments all the keyword argument passed must match one of the arguments accepted by the function and their order is not important next one is your no argument should receive a value more than once default argument are positional we already seen this in example next is your variable length argument sometimes what will happen i really don't know how much data coming here to add to add the functions so in that case we will use the variable length argument where we don't know the number of data we are getting so two types of arbitrary or variable length arguments are there arbitrary positional argument arbitrary keywords argument variable length positional argument this is used an asterisk in place Uh, is placed before a parameter in function definition and these arguments will wrap up data in the form of tuple so let's see with the example here i don't know how many values are i am getting to add number so what i will do for addition i really know that i minimum need two numbers so one is fixed and other one is i don't know how many numbers are coming so i will take asterisk in the parameter and b now Uh, I will take an variable result is equal to initialize with zero and taken a for loop for i in b result is equal to result plus i. Okay, now print the result. now at the time of function call now i can send as many arguments as i want for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 one will assign to arguments a and all of 2 3 4 5 6 are assigned to b in the form of tuple let's see the result this is the result you are getting okay so this is your variable length positional argument they are sending to the argument according to their position now next one is your variable length keyword argument they are represented variable length positional argument are represented as asterisk a at gs and variable length keyword argument is represented as double asterisk k w a at gs in python they are used when we uh, want to send the data in the form of keyword for example i want to set uh, let's remove this i want to print a person's data persons and after the name i don't know how many data it is coming so in that case i will use double asterisk and data of person now i will print name because name will i will get compulsory and after that for this double asterisk data store data in the form of dictionary so here in for loop i will take two counter variable i and j data dot items because it print i n j i j uh let's call this function 
person name is let's say zara and after that i want to give age is equals to 18 sorry 12 and after that uh, mobile number is equals to any random mobile number or city is equals to gaziabad okay let's have this data now call the function now let's run the code Big subject no attribute item. So sorry. Now let's run the code. Data dot items. Okay. I will get the data in the form of dictionary. Age will represent 12. And mobile number is assigned to MOB and Gazi is assigned to city. So that's it for today. In next video, we will uh, more explore about the function. Thank you, everyone.